Florida's Fourth Estate with hosts Ginger Gadsden and Matt Austin, the show where we bring Florida into focus. Oh, man, do we hope you're having a good day. We are so honored that you would join us here on our humble podcast, Florida's Fourth Estate. My name is Matt Austin. And I'm Ginger Gadsden. I guarantee you if they were not having a good day before this, they'll have a really great day after they listen or watch this, don't you think? That's the goal because of you. You bring the sweet, I bring the sassy. We're like the perfect combination of podcast hosts, I think. I mean, I think I should bring the spicy. My name is Ginger. I'm a spice. (laughs) You should, but you're just too kind of a human being. That's the problem. (laughs) Hey, today we're going to scare you a little bit. We're continuing our October series of spooky, ghosty Florida stuff. Right, Gigi? And we have a really great guest today. She is the founder of one of the oldest uh, ghost tours in Central Florida. And she told us both a story, Matt, and we both just went like, what? <laughs> and you yeah. don't even believe in that sort of thing. You're a big skeptic, but our jaws dropped. I can't wait for you to meet her and hear some of her haunting tales. But you know what else is very scary this week? Stuff that's in the news. <laughs> <Isn't> Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> You know, you can't make this stuff up. It is one of those weeks where Florida news did not disappoint. Florida man did not let us down. He delivered in a big way. So we're going to start with a story that caught my attention because this could have gone sideways really fast. This is happening in Osceola County. It's in Kissimmee, I believe. This is a bus driver. They pulled over at the racetrack so the bus driver could... Uh, use the bathroom and the bus attendant is cleaning the bus and they're getting ready for the next load of kids, right? And all of a sudden, this guy who you see right there hops on the bus. The driver's not there. He tries to take off with it. That's the guy. The driver tries to take off with it, but the bus attendant comes from the back with her broom, pushes a button and then gets off the bus and saves the day basically because it disabled the bus. It is crazy. We have some sound we want you to listen to about what actually happened there. The attendant was sweeping, just doing her job as she's supposed to do while waiting for her driver to come back. She was a little shaken up the day of, but she's been back to work since. It's actually her training that helped her prevent something from terrible happening. I don't even know what could happen. There could have been a number of possibilities. She stopped all of them. Unbelievable. You know, at first we were saying, oh, a hero bus driver, but it was the bus attendant who was the hero here, Matt. So crazy. And what, you know, the guy in that soundbite said that she was uh, a little shaken up after this had all happened. Well, she got even more shaken because they learned that guy had a gun after the fact. Yeah. Turned out he was packing heat in there and was basically running from the cops because you'll notice in the video, the cops get there really quickly. He thought, oh, you know what? I'm just going to go steal this bus, but the fact that she had the presence of mind to hit that button. So that button was the air brake. And if Mm -hmm. I were going to drive a bus really quickly and I'm panicking and I'm running from the cops, I've only been through this a few times, but if that actually happened, I wouldn't know. She, I would just know she hit something. And then that brake just completely like basically incapacitated the entire bus. And the guy did not know what to do. So Pretty incredible that that woman did that, and uh, she should be applauded because who knows what would have happened if that guy got that huge bus going on the road. He would have hurt some people for sure because I don't think you just naturally know how to drive a big old school bus. Mm -mm. Just say it. No, so, for anyway, sure. But thank goodness that yeah. she was back there and, and no one got hurt. No this one got true. hurt. Yeah. And that's yeah. the goal of all of these stories. Somebody does get hurt in this next story, though. But it's a kind of mind bending, silly situation. OK, so a woman a family, they find this alligator is behind their U-Haul trailer in their neighborhood. And they say, well, we don't have a gator wrangler around here, but we've got a dog trainer. That's the same thing, right? Oh. It's Gators really like not. dogs. No, no, Gigi, they're not like dogs. They're more like cats. We've learned on this podcast, you know? <laughs> but you can see it's not a big gator. So this dog trainer comes out. He decides he's going to throw a sweater over the face of the gators. Like I'm watching this Netflix thing right now of this guy who gets the crocodiles in Australia and he always throws like a rag over the gator's eyes and the gator calms down. Well, he throws the sweater over the gator thinking that this little gator is going to be fine. 
The gator freaks out, bites him in the hand, and they can't get this gator off of him until another neighbor gets a broom handle, sticks it in that gator's mouth, and then pries its mouth open. Gators have bite forces of thousands of pounds. It is insane. You don't want to mess with these things, Gigi. I mean, I'm surprised he didn't lose that arm. Thank goodness. You know, he's got some, he's, he's licking his wounds, you know, and probably maybe slightly embarrassed as well. I think when he got there, he started yelling, stay. No. Uh, <laughs> Sit, Gator. Sit. Just, they all use, the, all the trainers use those German words. It's like, ah. I said, what did you just do? I don't, ah, know, I, they, I don't know what they sound like. Uh, I don't know what they mean, but it's always a, there's always some spitting involved. Yeah. Oh, but thankfully, this guy is going to be OK. His, you know, his pride, his ego may be a little bruised in his arm, of course. But he lives to tell the tale of the time he the dog catcher tried to <laughs> wrangle a gator. That ain't no German <laughs> shepherd. Oops. <laughs> Okay, so this next story is crazy because I don't know how someone has the, um, I don't know what language this word comes from, but quijones. Oh, do- <laughs> oh, I know what that means. I don't know if we could say it. We could say it on a podcast. We can't say it on TV. We said it. We said it. Yeah. To pull off a crime like this, it is brazen. It is bold. Just roll the sound and you'll see. They dropped into their attic and then opened these surveillance holes to access and to survey our security system. They surveyed everything and they saw they couldn't access the store. They came here and cut a hole and cut, this is a firewall, so they cut the steel out. We have everything fortified and still, they were able to get in and out of here in less than four hours from what we have seen in the surveillance Mm. video. Everything we ever worked for and and saved over for many years, uh, you know, was in that vault. The planning, the improvisation that had to go into all of that, because when the first thing didn't work, then they had to go to plan B and C. And when that guy said under four hours, that's an eternity to be in a place where you are robbing and taking $400,000 in jewelry, which is insane. And they still haven't caught these guys. No, all they have to go on right now, Ginger, are these grainy surveillance pictures, which makes you think they might just get away with it if they don't find any DNA. But the way they came in through the attic of the store next door then they cut holes so they could look around and they saw if you see up in the corner of that video there are heat Mm -hmm. sensors in every room so if human body heat comes in the alarm is going off well guess what they found the perfect spot to dig in went behind that desk and then he has this super sophisticated safe but i don't know why you'd have a sophisticated safe and then have just kind of wall behind it. It's super reinforced they steel. Sawed right through it. They I mean, right I, through it. They yeah. had to have the right tools, the right timing. They had to enter through the right place. So many things that could have gone wrong did not go wrong for these guys. And sadly, they got away with this man. He says that everything that they've worked so hard for was gone just like that the next day. So hopefully, and you can't even ask people, do you recognize these guys? It's like, oh, no, no yeah. one does. That video is useless. Yeah, 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 but that is, it's, I mean, it's one of those brazen heists that you see. It's almost like it was in a movie. Ocean's 13. <laughs> yeah, Something. it's true. Oh and they got away God. with $400,000 in jewelry. So that's crazy. Pretty that's incredible. Want to yeah. end this little news block here, our headlines on a good one. So obviously Hurricane Ian in, families got flooded out, their homes were destroyed. But in some cases, these are turning out okay. This kid right here okay. that you're looking at, you see his family, if you're listening, adorable little boy. They got dogs, mom and dad. Well, he lost his Pokemon collection. Okay. Oh. I don't know if you have a kid who's into the Pokemon cards. They're, it's it's their thing. It's like if you, like when I was a kid, you collected baseball cards. And if your baseball card collection, it was like basically your IRA oh. disappearing. Oh. So he never packed them out, never packed them up. These cards ended up getting soaked. And uh, so I think they did a news story about this family and Pokemon cards start showing up in the mail from all over Southwest Florida, people supporting him from all over the country, people sending this young man. And now I think he's caught them all. He was able to catch them all. He's got all of them right now.
Oh, he's caught our hearts, that's for sure. And that's what's so important to remind people that there is still a lot of good out there. And this kid, he will never forget something like this. I mean, Ian is memorable enough, but he will remember it for different reasons, I, I believe, and his family too. And that has to make them feel so good because their kid was heartbroken yeah. over this stuff. Of course, you know? and yeah, it's the thing he kid, loves. Like, oh, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, oh, you still got your life. But for a child, that's so important. And I just love that these adults and kids came together and sent him just boxes and boxes of Pokemon cards. That is delightful. Okay, so we have to talk about something that's not delightful, and that's going to happen on the other side of the break because I'm still creeped up by ghosts. Matt is not. But on the other side of the break, we're going to talk to the woman who is the founder of one of the oldest ghost tours in Central Florida. She's going to have some spine tingling stories. I say that tingling because her I name like is what you did there. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go away. Florida's fourth estate is coming back to haunt your dreams. Haunt your nightmares. <laughs> Welcome back to Florida's <laughs> Fourth Estate. We are talking scary, haunted Florida. Believe it or not, we have a very old state. People have been roaming around the state for a long time. And we're going to tell some ghost stories in honor of the month of October. So welcome back to the show. Gigi, I'm excited about our guest this week. I'm not sure if I'm excited or scared. I'm both. I'm very excited to have her here, but I'm really kind of nervous to hear the story she's going to be telling because we asked for a really creepy story. And even when we said that, she's like, oh, I have one. I don't love it, but it's going to scare you. So I'm like automatically, okay, Matt, you're doing this by yourself. Yeah. We're well, she said, I don't love it, but she got really smiley. She's like, <laughs> yes. I don't love it, but I don't know. She I'm got kind of excited about want. it. Okay. So we're talking to Ting Harappa from American Ghost Adventure. She is the founder. It is one of the oldest and the longest running ghost tours in Central Florida. Ting, thank you so much for being here with us. Well, thank you for having me. I'd love to tell you guys some great and scary stories. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we want to, you know, it's, I love being scared, but I do not like the paranormal. But I understand that this story is one that you are even creeped out by. Tell me, tell me a little bit before we get started, what draws you to the paranormal? You know, if you told me years ago that I was going to be doing this, I would have thought you were crazy because the word ghost to me back then scared the heck out of me. I would not even talk to you. I would back away and run. Go, no, 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 no stories. <laughs> not, I don't even want to mention the word ghost. But um, my entire life has been surrounded by it. I mean, unusual stuff. Uh, the spirits find me whether I want them to or not. So after what do you mean they years, find you? Decided, what do you mean they find you? They, they seek me out. They really, really do. Whether I want to or not, I'll end up at the most haunted hotel. I'll end up at a haunted location. Um, I'll have some sort of un, you know, uh, explainable occurrence that happens to me. And people always look at me and go, did that just really happen? I'm like, yep, it sure did. It always happens to me. So I just decided to research it a little bit more so that I could understand it, so I could protect myself. And then I got so involved in it that I really ended up loving it. So it's part of my life now. It's a lifestyle that I have. Okay. I'm very interested in this lifestyle. And you have, this is your business, right? So tell us, we didn't just bring you in randomly, a person <laughs> with a random ghost story. This is what you do. And you are with the American Ghost Adventures. You're the founder, in fact. Yes, yes, yes. This is my uh, hobby. It turned into a business. And I just started telling stories to people randomly, you know, at functions and stuff like that. And they go, you know, you should do this. You should just... You, you creep me out. You, I mean, those stories are <laughs> Best so compliment scary. ever. You creep you know? me out. <laughs> and I go, you know why it's so scary? Because it's real. It's true. It really happened. And uh, yeah, it happens all the time. And I have a new story every day. I could talk to you for days about it, not years, about the experiences I've had. <laughs> okay. So how long have you been doing these ghost uh, adventure tours in Central Florida? I've done ghost tours professionally now for 18 years. We've done investigations, research, and ghost telling uh, for 18 years now. Wow, that is a long time. And as you talk to me, I keep looking over your shoulder. I'm looking for anything <laughs> that might be visiting. Because if it follows you and it finds you, I feel like it's with you right now. Is there something like in that room with you right now? I probably have my mother-in-law in here right now. She's oh, man. 
I think that's what they call hell. <laughs> 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 she's actually a good wow. spirit so she actually watches out for us but yeah there's multiple spirits um even if i don't want them in the home you know like strange spirits that i come home from tours after doing tours i realized that spirits can follow you they do not have to haunt the place that they died they're not trapped to the building unless they're a certain type of spirits they can go anywhere they want and early in my career i didn't know how to do a closing and spirits came home with me so it's wait a minute really, wait a minute really you're telling mean? me they're hitchhikers what <laughs> <laughs> Hitchhiking ghosts is a real thing. And uh, yeah, I use my dog and cats as security now. So when I come home from a tour, I come in, I, I wait for my dog and cat to greet me. And if they look behind me, there's somebody with me. And I turn around and go, you can't come in my house. You're not welcome. I'm oh, so bad. Finish this up. <laughs> man. All right, Ginger, it was nice knowing you. Oh uh, my God. We're no, going to finish this up. They say the animals know because sometimes my, I have two dogs, they will just look off into a space. And I always think it's one of my parents visiting me, but they will look off into a corner of a room and they are looking at something and there is nothing to my eye there. That is true. 80% of the time when you meet a ghost or see a ghost, it's most likely going to be a relative. The other 20% of the time is being at the right place or in some cases the wrong place. And the more haunted places you go, the more likely you're going to see a spirit. So yes, if that dog and cat are looking in that corner, it most likely is going to be a relative of yours that's visiting and saying hello. Okay. I mean, I think maybe the dog and cat just has a little gas. <laughs> uh, that's kind of where I'm at with this whole thing. I'm not a big believer in the ghosts and Ginger gets mad at me over this, but I just, I don't know. So, okay. If you're a skeptic like me, tell me the ghost story that's going to convince a skeptic that ghosts are real. Give it to me. What's the scariest, no weirdest, worries. creepiest story you no, have? No worries. She said. <laughs> oh, she's so this worried. This comes to mind um, because it's in the month of October and it happened several years ago. And uh, this time of year is when I think about this story. So a lot of things you don't have to believe. We try not to convert people into ghost believers. We just produce the evidence for them. We give them the history. We give them the ghost stories. And we give them the equipment to find out if it is urban legend or if it's truly haunted. So early in my career, we started doing what we call pup tours. And, you know, we really didn't know how to approach it. We were just putting it out there. And one of the newspaper, local newspaper, sent one of their um, writers to come on our tour. She contacted me and said, hey, I'm going to come on this one. I said, well, let me iron out all the wrinkles of it first. So please don't come on this one. I, this is going to be our first one. And she says, I'm so sorry. I already booked it. And I've already invited my friends to come along. So we're like, okay, pressure's on, pressure's on. So we do this pub tour and we're walking around and we're using different instruments and everything. And her name was called out several times on several different people's phones and several different instruments. Her name was Kelly. And it said, Kelly, Kelly, Kelly at different locations. And my tour guide at that time was like, Ting, it's so weird. They keep calling her name out. And the number 12 keeps coming up. So I pulled her aside and I said, just out of curiosity, you know, is, it is a pub tour, it's fun, it's drinking, it's liquid spirits, but your name was called out several times on this tour by instruments that are not connected from random people. And the number 12, are you the 12th child? Is 12 your lucky number? Are you born in December? What does 12 mean to you? And she looks at me, she goes, I, I have no idea. Uh, I don't know why it's calling me. She goes, it's kind of creepy, but the number 12, I have no idea. So we do the tour. She ends up writing a review for us. She doesn't help us, but she doesn't harm us either. She says, we do need improvement, which we knew about because it was our first tour. We're ironing everything out. Um, so the review comes out and I try to give her a call. She never answers her phone. And I called again and I called again to try to talk to her about the review and stuff like that. And her husband answers the phone and he goes, Hey Ting, I just want to give you a heads up. Uh, my wife won't be answering the phone anymore. I said, oh, well, I just really wanted to talk to her about this review. And she go, he goes, she passed away. I'm like, what? She's 36 years old and she passed away. So I, I was like, I, sorry, I give you my condolences. I am just so sorry about that. So I write my team. I said, hey, the review stays as it is because the writer actually passed away at the age of 36. And the tour guide that was with her writes me back and goes, do you know what date it is that she passed? And I, I gave the date and he goes, Oh my gosh, it's literally 12 days after the tour that she passed. <gasps> I missed the signs and signals. The spirits in all these buildings were calling her name and giving her warnings, 12. Like she was gonna literally 12 pass days. in 12 days. Yeah, that freaked us out when we 
correlated the two together. And these spirits have helped me on several different occasions. Whenever, you know, I'll ask something, uh, I'm lost. Can you help me out? A windstorm will blow a sign down and make me go one way. So they were literally telling me 12, ting, 12 days for Kelly. There was no okay. way I would have known that. That is. You okay, Ginger? Okay. Status check I, on Ginger. Ginger, are you okay? <laughs> no, I'm not okay. One, when you say instruments are calling her name, what what kinds of instruments are you talking about? Are is somebody? Did you hear like, a voice? Um, it was a voice. It was a what's called a spirit box that lets the spirits talk to us through radio waves. There were cell phones that people were using phone apps to play with, which is for entertainment only. And that's how we looked at it, it was just for entertainment mm -hmm. only. But several people's phone that were not even related to her, their names, her name came up on their phones, Kelly. And the number 12 would come up on random places on these instruments, on the spirit box. It whispered her name across it. And we all were like, oh, that's curious. That's unique, you know? If it came across once, it's one thing, but it came across multiple times that night. And I just never correlated the two together because we were so busy making sure that, you know, people were getting their drinks, they were going to the right locations, and that we were telling stories that we had missed the signs altogether. I mean, 12 days could have been, you know, she could have had a medical issue or whatever. We would have. Yeah, I was going to say, do you know how Kelly died? died? Do you know how she died? Yeah, I was wondering the same thing. She died. Uh, she had, as a child, some kind of heart complications, but her husband said that she passed away in her sleep. She just didn't wake up. So at least I'm assuming it was a peaceful death for her in her but 30s. i mean you could say it's wow. coincidence or whatever but i mean literally 12 days after the tour she passed that's wild i i have not heard a story quite like that one that's interesting <laughs> okay that's, that's a little yeah that's kind of a uh okay dark it's story dark. It's yeah dark. it is and that's yeah, why she was things. saying i'm kind of hesitant to tell this story do you have one that maybe uh, give us a kicker in, in the news. We have a kicker story. OK, where it's like we have the hard stories and then we have one that was just kind of a little more fun and lighthearted. Do you have one that where maybe these ghosts that one was have, hard? That was. Yeah. I'm still recovering. <laughs> Do you have one where, where maybe these ghosts uh, had a sense of humor or something funny happened with all this? Absolutely. So. The spirits aren't always belonging to the building or location. So when people come on our tours, some of them actually bring their guardian angels with them or their relatives with them. They don't realize it. So we're doing a tour in downtown Orlando. We're walking around. We're teaching people how to communicate with spirits and everything. And this one lady, I will remember this always. If I touch certain things sometimes or look at certain things, if the, the atmosphere is just right, I can pick up on the energy that they bring with them. And I looked at her and I said, you have a female spirit that follows you. And she goes, I do. I have my grandmother that follows me quite often. And during the tour, it's a two hour tour. I get to know her a little bit better. And I said, your grandma keeps saying white dress. What, what is up with a white dress? And she goes, oh my gosh, I'm getting married tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So her grandmother was letting me know that, hey, I'm here with her. I'm going to be here at her wedding day. Uh, I'm with her. So it was amazing. It made her cry to let her know that her grandmother was with her, you know, with her at that time and that she was going to be at their wedding ceremony with her. So it's a tear jerk oh when God. family members come along. Yeah. Do you think <laughs> that someone like me, because I, I believe there's something else. We just don't, when we go to the other side, we just don't disappear from this side, right? So if there's someone who is open to receiving or knowing that there are spirits surrounding them. Is there something they can do to like maybe work on, it's like a muscle, right? Like, can they reach out to them, see them, communicate with them? If, you know, if you know they're harmless. Yes, so you could just say things out loud. I tell people if you're going into a haunted building, if you work in a haunted building or live in a haunted place, just say hello and good morning to them. Remember, ghosts were people at one point in time also. So behaviors don't change very much. The only difference now is that they don't have a, a shell or a body to be in to house their soul. But the same personality comes through every time. So if you just talk out loud and said, hello, everybody, I'm good morning. I'm here to work today. Uh, I'm hoping that we have a, a good day. I hope you have a good day, too. <laughs> Or what we're doing today is that we're having a group of people come in today. They're going to do a meeting. We're going to have a party. And then we're all leaving about 10 o'clock tonight. And I'll tell you goodnight at that point in time. So saying it out loud to the universe, they can hear you. Absolutely can you also can tell them if you don't want to know they're there to like just not bother you? Absolutely. I do that all the time. I'm like, I feel Matt's you. Matt's laughing I see at me. You. Don't 
scare me. You can stay in my home if you like, but do not scare me or surprise me. And I'm fine with you being here. And I do that on tours too. And I'll go, stop it, stop it. You're scaring me. Don't slam that door again. Wait till the guests get here to do that. And, oh and the good God. spirits will listen. They're respectful. They're like, oh, okay. It's not time yet. I'm just picturing <laughs> oh. Ginger, like walking through a cemetery, like, uh, hey, hey, hey. Back off. You, you won't, don't that touch That is me. a picture that you're not going to see. <laughs> I know. I'm probably not going to see that anytime soon. I'm curious as to the reaction you get from people because uh, especially maybe if you're religious, uh, and I don't know uh, what there's a religious component for you in this. Some folks think that like what you do, like communicating with other spirits uh, might be some sort of witchcraft or something like that. Do you, what do you have, what reaction do you have to that? Oh, okay. So like I said, beforehand, I was terrified of spirits and stuff like that before I started the ghost tours. I actually work as a firefighter EMT and um, I work for a department and I work with a crew of guys. And when I first started this department, they actually got called me into the chief's office uh, because they were scared and said that I was a witch <laughs> uh, because we would go on calls and at the end of our beds, sometimes there would be a spirit standing there and we could see them. And they thought I was playing with them. And I'm like, nope, that's not me. Uh, we would sit in the day room watching television. The TV would turn off by itself. And I'd get up and go, I'm going to bed now. Good night. And they're like, why did you turn off the TV? And I go, I don't have the remote control. I'm the only female in the station. I don't have the remote. <laughs> and somebody else will go, oh, I have the remote. And they go, did you put it on sleep? And I'm like, no. The yeah. lady that's sitting in that chair over there is telling us to go to bed. And they're like, what lady? I'm like, I don't know who she is, but she's telling us to go to bed. I'm just going to obey. I'm just going to bed, buddy. And now, now we've been together for over a decade together. So they understand, like when we run on motor vehicle accidents, sometimes those spirits are very sudden and they come back to the station with us. So I always say out loud, we have done everything we possibly have. Please do not follow us back to the station. Go towards the light, go towards family, go finish your business and go where you need to go. But please don't follow us back. I will hear the guys now say that every once in a while when we're on a call, just out of precaution, whether they believe it or not, they just do it now. Mm. Because we've had so many incidents around surrounding me. You know what I mean? Um, it, it's really, really interesting. So yeah, people think it's spooky. They think it's scary. I think it's scary. I scare myself. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm terrified of the dark. You know, they'll go, you go in there first. Oh I'm like, no, 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 no. You guys go first. I'll be in the middle. I watch enough horror movies. <laughs> if I saw dead people, I'd be scared of the dark too. <laughs> right? Exactly. I, I don't see them and I'm terrified of the dark because I don't yes. want to experience any of that ting. I feel like sometimes, and Matt's going to think I'm crazy, but he, what's new? Oh, please. Let's so, hear it. you know, do they mess with you sometimes? Because I swear, I will, and I know it's somebody in my family, like, you know, because I've lost a few relatives you know, recently, not long ago. And, and one of them was my brother, right? And so he was a prankster. And sometimes I know I put something in a certain spot, Ting. I know I did, 100%. Because if you have a routine, you go, you can't find it, you can't find it. It'll either randomly end up somewhere what I where I would never put it, and I'm the only person who would have touched it, and it's, it's somewhere else, or it's where I looked, but I know it wasn't there before. Do they mess with you? Absolutely. That is when they're trying to get in contact with you. They're messing with things that you will notice that would be gone. So it probably is a relative that's just letting you know, hey, I'm here, but you're not paying attention to me. You're ignoring me. So I'm going to move your keys over here. You're going to miss your keys. You know, if I move a pen, it could be anywhere. I could have lost it or whatever. But if I move your keys, you specifically put it here. Now I got your attention. It's going to make you question, is somebody else in the room with me? You know, so they, they move it on purpose to get your attention. When that happens, just go, I know you're here. I'm not sure what you want, but please put my keys back where they belong. When I come back in the room, hopefully it's there. I'll acknowledge you and just tell them, please don't scare me. Please let me know you're here by doing other things, but don't scare me. I, I love you. Thank you. And, you know, just put it out there in the universe. And like, like you said, it'll reappear in certain places sometimes, but they're just trying to capture your attention. Are there people who are more prone to seeing spirits? Because I have a friend who anytime there is, she says she can feel the air when she walks into a room and she knows, and she's learned not to tell people when she's walked into their home if there's something there because people usually don't want to know. But she says the air is different. What has your experience been? 
That is exactly correct. So for me, when I walk in, sometimes I get severe headaches. So I know something's around. Um, it feels heavier sometimes. You just feel uncomfortable. And she's absolutely correct. Some people get chills, uh, what they call them goosebumps. Uh, men usually get stomach aches. They, for some reason, it's their stomachs that bother them. It almost feels like a roller coaster ride is what they usually describe to me. But women get uh, headaches, dizziness when there's other spirits in the room. Um, different people react to different spirits differently, meaning my son, he can actually smell them. Like some people can smell rain. He smells dead people. He just says it's a very old stench to him. And he just goes, they're here now. And I'm like, who? And he goes, them. And he just says, oh, geez, I that's them. a horror movie. Mom, <laughs> yeah, I smell dead them. people. Yeah. My, both them. my boys will not be on our tours. They do not come on our tours. And it is a hereditary thing. We do know that um, for people to see. If there's anybody in your family that sees spirits, you're most likely somebody in your family will carry that gene and you will be able to see them also. You just have to be a little bit more open minded to it. For the longest time, I just closed my eyes and said, I don't want to see you. Please don't scare me. And that helped for a little while, but they still will come out and interact with you. Ting, if you're ever at my scene, um, I'm going to tell you to <laughs> tell my ghost, don't go into the light. Get back into that body. <laughs> and I've uh, what a fascinating person you are. Ting, if somebody wants to uh, join one of your ghost experiences, how do they do it? They can go online and go to AmericanGhostAdventures.com. We are open all year round, so it's not just the month of October. Ghost hunt 24 hours, seven days a week, and all year long. And we hope to see they you don't guys. Take it's it's not a seasonal gig. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Ting Repa with American Ghost Adventures. Thank you so much for joining us. And whoever your guests are with you in that room, thank them, too. Yeah. If, thank you guys, and I'll see you guys on a tour. If, it sounds good. I would love it. If there's anybody over my shoulder, I don't want to hear about it, Tim. All right. Have a great we'll week. See we'll see you next week with another spooky Bye. episode. Yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> thank you.